Christine, thank you for speaking with me. Can you tell me why marriage equality is such an important issue to you? Well, it's an important issue to me personally because obviously I want to get married. Um, and I want to get married to a woman, uh, to my partner, Virginia Edwards. So uh, it, it, it has a great deal of personal significance to me. But it's also important, I think, for Australian society, uh, for the, certainly for the Australian gay and lesbian, uh, the LGBTQI community broadly, it's an important issue. And, it, and it's become an, a more important issue over the last um, probably decade, I would say, uh, when this has been on the horizon. Um, it's it's a really important issue, I think, as I say, for Australian society. Um, it would be a great economic boon. Uh, and we've seen that recently with uh, corporate Australia coming out to back marriage equality. Uh, and that's been because, essentially, Australian companies are recognising that marriage equality would be good for the people in their workplaces, it would be good for productivity, it would be good for the bottom line. So there's an economic plus to this, but the, the real reason is, the, is what it brings to the social fabric of Australia, uh, and that is recognition that uh, marriage uh, is the bedrock of our society. It's what holds our society together. It's what binds people uh, as in their relationships and their communities and their families. Uh, so that is all really positive stuff uh, for, for Australia as a whole. Uh, and, and of course there's the emotional uh, upside to this that, uh, that everybody feels uh, when they're able to commit to the, to the person that they love, to that special relationship uh, which is held up as a special relationship uh, by by everyone. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a marriage act. Um, uh, so that that you know there is that that emotional upside, that emotional uplift that comes from allowing everybody uh, to be able to say we are publicly getting married uh, because we love each other and because this is a special relationship. Polls repeatedly show that most Australians support marriage equality. Why do you think politicians here in Australia have been so slow to come on board? Well, you're right. Um, the polls consistently show that uh, a strong majority of Australians, uh, the last poll was 68-32, uh, support marriage equality, uh, and that's broad support. Uh, you're right that the politicians have been slow, uh, way too slow in my opinion, uh, and that stems from the 2004 decision of the then Liberal Prime Minister John Howard, who is a traditionalist and he'd be the first one to admit that. Uh, to change the definition of marriage in the Mar Marriage Act to being between a man and a woman. And I suspect, I don't know, I've never discussed it with him, but I suspect he did that because he had an inkling that there might be a push on at some point in the future to, to, to have legal same-sex marriage in Australia. Uh, there have been very conservative elements in both the major parties in Australia, and, and as Australia is very much... Uh, you know, a, a political landscape dominated by the two mainstream parties. Yeah. And there have been very conservative elements. There's a very conservative element in the right wing of the Australian Labor Party. Uh, it's traditionally, it's been the kind of Irish Catholic trade union movement. Uh, and, of course, there's a very conservative traditional uh, wing, right wing of the Liberal Party, which you know, is the more conservative regarded as being the more conservative of the two. It took a while, a long while, for the Labor Party to, to get on board the idea that rather than policy about marriage being defining marriage as between a man and a woman, which they did as well uh, going into the, t the 2010 general election, both of the major parties had uh, a policy that marriage could only be between a man and a woman. Uh, the Labor Party came round at their next national conference after that, had a debate, a robust debate, uh, and decided that they would uh, allow MPs to vote with their consciences on this issue if it, when it next came up. The Liberal Party went uh, into the 2013 uh, federal election with the stated position of the, the leader, the Prime Minister, being that, uh, that, that it would be a matter for discussion if it came up uh, in the current term of Parliament. So there's been a steady progression. Uh, some elements of, of some parties have been slower than, than others, but, but certainly there, is a, there has been a huge movement um, uh, within my party, 
the Liberal Party over the last two, three years to, to acknowledge that this is, uh, should be a conscience issue when it does come before the Federal Parliamentary Party, uh, and hopefully that's what will happen. There has been a bit of pushback lately. Um, uh, the main, in, the main you know, point of momentum recently for everybody has been, of course, the Irish, the wonderful Irish referendum result, which, which really spurred on the debate here in Australia. Uh, and got both the political parties, main political parties, talking about this. Um, you know, since then there's been pushback from the from the, the right wings of both political parties. But I'm very confident that at the end of the day, uh, the Liberal Party, the Federal Liberal Party in Canberra, will treat this as a conscience issue when it comes before Parliament. You are a councillor in the city of Sydney for the Liberal Party. Yes. What influence do you think <laughs> councillors such as yourself and state politicians can have on federal politicians on yeah. the issue? Well, look, yes, I am a Liberal councillor, and proudly so. Uh, and obviously I can't have any direct influence on, on, the, on what happens in the federal uh, parliamentary party room. But, but I, can, I do talk to my federal colleagues, I talk to my state colleagues, Often, uh, and and you know, in the course of that discussion, you know, I'll particularly with my federal colleagues, uh, I usually raise the issue because it is, uh, you know, it's it's coming onto the front burner, um, and uh, I you know I sound them out about what their views are either way. Um, in the public domain, obviously, I'm, I'm lucky in the sense that because I have a bit of a profile through being a City of Sydney councillor and because of there being a perceived, uh, you know, strong uh, disagreement between myself and, and my brother, the Prime Minister, uh, I, I'm, I'm able to, to take a, pro a very public profile on this and, and push it from, from the front. Um, which you know, I hope is productive. Uh, you know, only time will tell, but it certainly uh, does. I, I think you know, in all you know, yeah, honesty and modesty, um, at least I think help keep it in the public uh, in the public domain uh, to help you know. And I will do whatever I can to, to continue that discussion uh, in the public domain and in the party. Uh, so I do what I can. Is the, is the answer to that, and um, and and hopefully, we'll, you know, as this process washes through, we'll get closer and closer. And I feel that that's what's happening from the feedback that I get from my from my federal party colleagues. That uh, and, you know, increasingly, they are coming uh, they coming out as being in favour of a conscience vote on the issues. So uh, there's movement, and I see you know really encouraging signs of movement. Pretty much every time I, I have those conversations with, with my colleagues in Canberra. Of course, there's been the recent referendum in Ireland, and some people here have talked about a plebiscite or a referendum. Yeah. What are your views on that? Uh, not good. Uh, not a good idea. Um, and, and the idea of the plebiscite's really only been raised by people who don't want to see this reform happen. Uh, and and they're, they're using it as a political tactic. There's, there's, there's no question about that in my mind. Uh, they see it as being able to... Delay the d delay the possibly inevitable, um, and 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 you know, and I I don't really I try to avo avoid talking about marriage equality as being inevitable, um, only because I think that kind of invigorates the the opponents of marriage equality, and you know it's it, it tends to I think you know g them up uh, because nobody wants to be told that they don't have a choice in this. Um, so I, you know, I think maybe from the movement's point of view, uh, the kind of inevitability rhetoric uh, is not necessarily something that we should be pushing, even though it's my belief that it is inevitable. <laughs> but in terms of the messaging around around it, uh, it's possibly not um, the strongest of, of, of tax to take. But the plebiscite is, has been proposed by people who don't want to see it happen. Uh, my view is that it, it would be very unnecessarily divisive. Uh, it would expose a lot of uh, young GLBTI people to you know, potential vilification as the community starts to debate this, you know, if the community did start to debate this in a polarised fashion, which I think they would, inevitably, much more so than if it were to be dealt with by Parliament, uh, because everybody in Australia would have to be making a decision. 
uh, on it. So it would be much more polarising and, and it would be much more damaging to the young gay and lesbian people and older gay and lesbian people who still feel very marginalised and vulnerable uh, about, about their personal circumstances. And that would be a really, really bad outcome. It would be expensive. Uh, and it would also be something that, if it were to, if it were to be a plebis, if we were to go to a plebiscite, it would, I think, inevitably uh, be attached to the next federal uh, government election, and and that would mean that this whole issue would really, really become a political football, which it wouldn't be good for anyone. Um, so the plebiscite, as I say, I I I, I don't have any. Uh, confidence that it will get up as an idea, but it's certainly being thrown around and being used as as a kind of a, 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 an excuse for us to not move ahead in the more in the better way, which would be through a discussion at parliamentary level. How do you reassure those who perhaps oppose marriage equality on, say, religious, traditional, or cultural grounds? Mm. Well. Look, I think whatever legislation is eventually, bipartisan legislation is eventually crafted, would, will have to uh, acknowledge the fact that religious institutions have their own rules, and rightly so. They are, you know, they, they are the clubs in, in a, and of themselves, and they are entitled to set their own rules, and that they shouldn't be, you know, compelled to do things that they that their faith doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't doesn't agree with. Uh, so that has to be that has to be dealt with as part of the legislation. Um, what I would say to people of, of, of strong faith who, who can't see their way around the idea is that, you know, m marriage, as I said, is the, is the bedrock of our, of our society. And people that want to get married want to get married because of very, because of very genuine uh, and very good reasons, because of the commitment and uh, the long term, they, they want to be monogamous, they want to be long term committed, they want to be in this special club <laughs> of a relationship, the relationship of marriage. Uh, so how could that possibly uh, be in, in any way at odds with uh, most of the principles of most organised religions, which which are, after all, about about love and 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 uh, you know consideration for others, uh, you know giving of of yourself to others. Um, that's kind of they're all uh, principles that are wrapped up in the idea of marriage. Occasionally, I'll meet people who identify as LGBTQI who oppose marriage equality yeah. on the grounds that we're aping heterosexuals yeah, yeah. or it's a patriarchal <laughs> institution yeah. or even that it entrenches the divide between perhaps married couples and unmarried couples. Do you have a response for them? Well, look, each to his own. Mm. Um, and, and, I mean, if people don't want to get married, they won't get married. But, but everybody should be entitled to get married should they so, so choose to. Uh, and that's what this is about. It's not about forcing anyone to get married or not get married. It's just about people simply having the right to do so if they wanted to. Um, so, look, I respect everybody's view in this. I respect the view of, of people, you know, like the Prime Minister who don't agree with, with you know, changing the definition of, of marriage. Uh, I, I completely respect uh, their right to, to hold that view. I disagree with it. Um, but it's and you know I respect every if somebody doesn't want to get married, gosh, who am I to tell them to get married? Now, of course, <laughs> you've mentioned that you are a city of Sydney Liberal councillor, yep. and you've also touched upon the fact that you are the Prime Minister's sister. Yep. So I, I can't avoid that exactly, and I have to ask you, and <laughs> I, I can't avoid it either. Have you had conversations about it with him? Of course, I have. Um, and, you know, and and and. I mean, we've had private conversations and we've also had public conversations because we both get asked about the other's views. Um, uh, so, yes, and uh, I will continue to have conversations with him because, like all my other federal parliamentary colleagues, federal liberal national parliamentary colleagues, he has a vote in this. Uh, he only has one vote, I will stress, um, just as every other member of the party has one vote. So of course I will I will continue to talk to him and um, you know it, it, in my view it's going to come down to it being I mean what what I want to see happen and and I know there are others of my colleagues well I'm not one of them but there are my federal colleagues there are many of them who are working hard behind the scenes to ensure that the party room strongly endorses 
a conscience vote on this issue. So, uh, yep, uh, the Prime Minister has one vote in that, in that process, just like everybody else. Uh, I know that he will vote against marriage, uh, changing the definition of marriage when it comes, if and when, when it comes to Parliament, because um, I'm fairly sure it will come to Parliament this year. Uh, I know he will vote against the change. Uh, how he goes in the party room in terms of the conscience vote, it remains to be tested, but I'm really confident that the party room will elect for this to be a free vote. You mentioned that you don't want to say that marriage equality is inevi inevitable, but you have a feeling it may be. Oh, I believe it is. What's the timeline? <laughs> what do you think the timeline is? I'm very hopeful, and I won't say confident, but I'm, I'm because all sorts of things could happen. And, and you know, this is in politics, things can change in a in a in a flash. Um, but I'm really very optimistic, uh, very hopeful that we'll get a change this year. Um, and part of that goes to the reasons that, that we've discussed, which is, I d and I don't, I don't think either of the political parties want this to get wrapped up in an election campaign. Um, and, and I, well, it certainly wouldn't be to the benefit of the Liberals if it got wrapped up in a, an election campaign, because we are perceived as being the, the kind of the roadblock to this, perceived. Um, uh, and we've been a bit slower at coming along than the, the, than the Labor Party has. So we're, you know, there, there is potential for us to get wedged badly, and particularly when you look at the, at the polls, which strongly show that 70% of people are in favour. Uh, now, whether or not that 70% would change their votes if they thought we were opposing this, who knows? But certainly our political opponents uh, have the opportunity to paint us like that. And why would anyone want to take that kind of risk? Let's deal with it before we get into a, you know, the, the guts of an election campaign. I mean, some could argue that we're always in an election campaign, and maybe I wouldn't really disagree, but you know, we're not, we're not in, a, in a full swing election campaign for a couple of months, you never know, something might happen. But let's deal with that before that happens. Uh, so it's not, not a political football, it's not a wedge issue for the community. Uh, you know, who, who would want this to divide the community? We want to bring the community along with it, like, like exactly what occurred in Ireland. You know, the community has embraced this with joy and, and with, with, you know, without any reservations, really. Um, and and it, that's what the sort of response that I'm really hopeful we get in Australia. A couple more questions. Sure. How can the public get involved in uh, supporting marriage equality? What well, can they do? Yeah, the, what they can do is they, they get in touch with their local MPs, and it doesn't matter who they are. Um, Labor, Liberal, Independent, get in touch with them. Uh, and get, ask your friends and families to get in touch with them as well, and strongly urge your, your uh, local representatives at federal level to back a conscience vote. Don't tell them they, they need to back marriage equality necessarily, uh, particularly if they're of the ilk that, that, doesn't, that doesn't agree with it, but urge them to, to, to ask their party to, to allow them to exercise their conscience on it. Because that way, you know, opponents, supporters can each put, the, at the end of this process, will be able to put their hearts on their hands and say, well, I did what I thought was right. Uh, and, and, in, and, and we can move on. <laughs> so the general public, get in touch with your federal MPs. Uh, some people seem to think that marriage equality ends the debate on LGBTQI no, rights. No. What more is there to fight for? Well, there's, I mean, there are other, there are other uh, rights, well, they're ongoing, of course. Uh, you know, we always have to make sure, uh, as a minority, that uh, LGBTI people aren't vilified, uh, you know, aren't discriminated against. Uh, and that, I mean, although that is enshrined in legislation, um, now we have to ensure that we as a society uh, are, you know, uh, observing those, those laws. Uh, there are laws around the rights of, of religious schools and institutions to, um, to dis discriminate against gay and lesbian people, and that needs to be addressed. But by and large, it's, it, you know, I would say marriage is probably the last great bastion of inequality, uh, and particularly because it's enshrined in our legislation as being an inequality. You know, you cannot get married if you want to marry somebody of the same sex. So uh, the fight, you know, the fight will never end, uh, you know, as it doesn't ever for any minor minority group. But um, certainly 
it, it, the marriage is a very important one, but but there are there there and you know and I'm not an expert on the, all the ins and outs of of, of what uh, what still needs to be done, but you know we've just changed very recently here in, in New South Wales the we've we've part the state parliament passed the expungement of criminal records for gay men who'd been charged uh, in the 1980s. I mean that was something that had been on the books you know for for decades and you know what an absolute injustice that that is. Uh, or was, and, and that's only recently happened. So I'm sure there are bits and pieces of legislation around the place that still need to be addressed, uh, like the religious institutions. Um, but uh, we have to be vigilant as a community, as a society, as a nation, uh, to ensure that uh, our, uh, you know, our equality is not just uh, platitude. Um, it's, it's actually how we how we function, how we operate, how we engage as a society. Christine, thank you very much. Pleasure.